Hello, everyone, and welcome to Missing Hiker. And welcome back again to another three short horror games. Now, this first one is a free short experience on Steam about trying to find our brother who went missing while hiking. And we're really worried because it's getting very late and very cold. So let's get in. December 11th, 1994. My brother Ethan is missing for around 24 hours. He went on a hiking trip near the Red Mountain. He should have come home yesterday. I went to the local police. They said they don't have the resources for a search right now. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. Ooh. Oh, we're actually driving! Oh, that's not good. Look at all this snow falling around us. Our headlights illuminating the trees as we pass. This actually feels kind of similar to the game we played at the start of the last uh, three short horror games, doesn't it? Although hopefully this time our car won't run out of gas on us. Now the screenshots with that sort of faux VHS aesthetic, or sort of faux PS1 style combined with the grain, I can't help but be reminded of the Fierce to Fathom Norwood Hitchhike. A narrow road. Okay, well, I suppose that's a good thing. I wouldn't even know where to start looking. Keep an eye out on the sides of the roads. Who knows what we might see. Oh wait, there's a light up ahead. Maybe the gas station that we saw in the intro, in the menu screen? <laughs> I can't help but get nervous when it has me make these winding turns. Makes me feel like, for just a brief second, our headlights are supposed to catch something in the tree line. We can even see our rearview mirror. Illuminated really only when a car passes us. I should park at this gas station and ask if they saw my brother. Okay, well there's a parking area right there. Do you not maybe want to fill up? I can't really see my... I can't really see my gas levels. Oh, it's such a still snowy night. This gas station acting almost as an oasis in the middle of this darkness and this cold. Uh, such a purgatorial feel, a convenience store at night, don't you think? What can I do for you, sir? I'm searching for my brother. He was hiking around this area. He should have come home yesterday. Have you seen him? How does your brother look like? He has brown hair and is pretty tall. He also has a green backpack. Let me think for a second. Hmm. Yeah, I think I saw your brother. He came in here and bought a few things. Some water and a few snacks. You're trying to find him? Have you told the police already? Yeah, I did. But they said they don't have the resources for a search right now. They said they only start searching if a person is missing for more than 48 hours. It isn't the first time someone went missing in this area. At least a handful of people went missing there in the last decade. Interesting. People talk a lot. I've heard rumors that there are strange screams and weird noises coming from the woods. So you should be careful, especially going there at this time of night. Yeah, I mean, I understand the worry, but I'm at high risk of becoming a missing person myself right now. It's dark, it's cold, there's no one with me to fan out. There's a road right behind the gas station leading to the mountain. Make sure to stay on it. There could be dangerous wildlife in that area. Oh, ho, ho. I like this. It's a classic stay-on-the-path story. 
Thanks. I'll make sure to stay safe. Take care. What about you? Do you know anything? What do you want? I'm searching for my brother. He went missing while hiking in this area. Sorry to offend you, pal, but that's not my problem. Also, you shouldn't just randomly approach people like this. Especially in this area. What do you mean? Hey, look, man. I worked pretty late. I just want to grab some snacks and beers and drive home. I'm not in the mood to talk with people I don't know. I understand. Sorry for bothering you. <sighs> Hope you end up missing. Uh, we can't explore the rest of this place. You know, I'm using video game logic and trying to search back there, but imagine this guy's point of view. I'm just walking around harassing customers and trying to sneak into the back. Okay, but we do have a flashlight. Which means we're going in there at some point. Look, the moon diffused to a pale white glow in the sky. I really love how the darkness is true darkness. I mean, I suppose we have a bit of a silhouette in that direction, but everything else? Black. Wait. Actually, what is that? I'm realizing now it's not black. It sort of fades into like a bluish hue towards the horizon, but only there. Can't even see our own car two feet in front of us. Uh, can we get in? Can we not get in? I don't understand. Are we actually meant to be making this journey on foot? Oh, it's a dirt road. I, I guess we are? Well, let's make our way in. As with many of these horror games, we do have a sprint, but it's not much of a sprint. Uh, real good choice to have snow as the setting. Adds to the urgency of having to find our brother. A reason why we're doing something as foolish as come in here this late. And yet, it also adds to a stillness. A calmness where there's no sound except for the ambient music. And our own footsteps. I'm telling you, walking in the woods is a very basic form of horror, but one that's so effective and so widespread for a very good reason. And a couple of times, see how the snowflakes settle on the ground and linger there for a moment? A couple of times, I've looked off into the dark and seen them, and thought they were a pair of glowing eyes reflecting back at me. Now, should I be exploring off the trail to some extent? Wait, there's a light over there. My brother's tent looks entirely different. I should take a closer look. Um, have you considered that maybe it's not your brother's tent? What are we gonna find? Okay, whoa, 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 who are you? He scared the- ugh. Okay, theory correct. If it doesn't look like your brother's tent, perhaps it's not your brother's tent. I scared you? I almost had a heart attack myself. What do you want? I hope you're not some kind of pervert creep. I'm not. I'm searching for my brother. He was hiking in this area. Have you seen him? No, I haven't seen him. Wait. You don't even know how he looks? What, what? These are some really bizarre dialogue options. Look, man, I'm just some guy that likes to hike in a woods and sleep in a tent in freezing conditions. Well, at least you're hanging a lampshade on it. I haven't seen anyone in days. You don't look dressed for this, either. I understand. You're planning to go deeper into the forest? Yeah. I'll search around the area. 
I hope I can find my brother, or at least traces of him. What a weird thing to say. In an ocean of weird things to say. Look, you'll probably think I'm a stoner or something. But last night I had my tent a bit up north. And I heard weird noises coming from the woods. And it sounded like a child was crying. But I didn't see anything. It creeped me out. Maybe it was a cryptid. A what? Look, man, do you carry? What do you mean? I'm talking about a piece, you know? Something for protection. You mean a gun? No, I don't. Then you shouldn't be here in the first place. It's way too dangerous to go deeper into the forest at night. But I'm not going to stop you. I just want to sleep now. Also, one last thing. Don't creep up on a tent in the woods at night ever again. I almost would have shot you. Well, I guess I'm glad you didn't. Me too. Good luck with the search. This is weird. This is like taking all the weirdest elements of the dialogue from Chillizart and Fears to Fathom and just slapping them into a handful of individuals. Wait. Which way was the path? I think I approached the tent from behind, so maybe this way? Okay, there we are. Man, that was only a few feet. That really goes to show just how easy it is to get lost in this darkness. Okay, well, you were on the left side, which means this path should take me to where I'm going. I mean, not that I really know what north is. It's just my only frame of reference. Look at this snowfall. And they said that there's been weird noises heard from the woods over the years. Multiple disappearances? I don't know if it's just me. I could have sworn I saw a shape just there. Some round mass just in front of the trees. Sounds like screams or now a child crying? Which doesn't really give me any clue as to what might be going on here. But then again, people do talk about all forests, so maybe it's some kind of red herring? Any number of things that could have happened out here. Paranormal, cryptid, or just plain breaking an ankle and not being able to get out. But this is, I mean, this is what horror is all about. Not dumb people making dumb decisions, desperate people making necessary decisions when there are only bad options. Hmm. Well, I guess this is the top of what they called the mountain. We're up on a hill. The trees seem to become sparser out here. At least for a short area. It's getting really cold. I should set up my tent on the left side of the road. Down here, I suppose? My fingers are pretty numb. It's hard to build the tent. Huh. Somehow it's even creepier to anchor ourselves in this spot. Like I feel watched. Like I placed a beacon... We even get that first-person POV from inside. It's cold, but I'm falling asleep slowly. I think I heard someone scream. Not sure if that was real or imagined. That was very, very faint. I need to check. 
It could be my brother screaming for help. Press F to use flashlight. Yes, um, but... Oh, oh no, am I going to have to follow the sounds? Oh no, there's a light deeper in the woods. I need to see if that could be my brother. I was going to say, is it going to be like... Is it going to be like uh, the house in the woods where I need to I need to follow the screams? Oh, that's actually a good bit farther off than I thought at first. The darkness distorts perception of relative size and scale. Yeah, there's definitely something over there, something big. And that light sure wasn't on before. Oh, a cabin. Oh, no, no, not my flashlight. I do not need that going out now. Won't be able to explore it all under my own power if that happens. Huh. This cabin is completely surrounded by a rusty chain-link fence with barbed wire at the top. Why would that be a thing? That's my brother's backpack. He must have been here. Weird. It's completely empty. Nothing in here. Nothing to do but explore the creepy survivalist hut. Maybe we could learn about the inhabitant if we just go through their trash. Do a full 360 check to make sure there's not a murderer waiting around the back. Uh, some photos on the table. Some food left out on the plate. Somebody was here pretty recently. Seems perfectly normal, although that meat cleaver is a little spooky. It would make sense for my brother to take shelter here, but then why leave the backpack outside? Can't open this up. Somebody made a picture of my tent. And my car. Somebody's been stalking me from the moment I got here. And what is that meat on the plate? Somebody butchers their own food. Meat hooks. And a generator. Okay, but what else? What else is there to do? There must be something more to find here. Wait. Is there someone there? There is. Hi! I'm definitely picking up on the fears to fathom. Inspiration, your body was never found. It looked like you were standing so far away. Okay, uh, was that it? Well, I just had a look on the Steam forums and the reviews, and it seems like the game length is around 20 minutes, which is about how long it took to complete, so I guess that's that. Ah, oh, so that was Missing Hiker, and, you know, it was short. I feel like it could have been more. Like, you could have expanded more on this concept, had us look around a little more, have more things to discover. It didn't have to end right there. It kind of feels like the developer was making this game and then kind of got bored or lost interest and said, okay, it ends right here. But for what it is, you know, you can't complain about free and it was pretty atmospheric. The one thing of note that I will say is that I really like having the snowy setting both for atmosphere and for adding a sense of urgency to the plot. Instead of just a character making dumb decisions for no reason, we have a very good reason for doing it even if it is a dumb decision.
But on to the next one. Next up is Rental, a game which looks to be adorable. It's got a Silent Hill thing going on here with its PS1 style graphics and lonely drive down a foggy mountain road. But it looked like in the screenshots you play as like a family of little bunnies or something. Oh, let's see what this is. I'm really curious. Oh, here we are. <laughs> I guess I can examine objects? Our good old Suzuki carry. Oh wow, this really does feel like those old PS1 games. What do you think, Umi? It's not too shabby. I guess we're renting a mountain cabin for the weekend. Did you want to play with me? No. Wow, I'm the rude character in this game. The door is open. Could the rental man already be here? Uh, that would be weird if you showed up to a rental and had to wait around for somebody to let you in. Well, let's just send our unaccompanied child in. Who closed the door? Hey, open up! But I'm the one inside. It won't open? I should find that dental... rental? Rental man. What a weird piece of dialogue. Oh, and we've got these, like, sort of Resident Evil-style fixed cameras. I should find that dental... rental man? Oh, you're just gonna say that on everything? Ah, oh, this is such a bizarre perspective. And... well, it's not exactly fixed, there's a little bit of a wiggle to... There was something at the end of the hall there. I saw it just for a second. There was like a shadow. It almost looked like it had two long arms that hung down to the floor like a gorilla. Yeah, something's wrong with this place. All right, and doors open and close simply by walking through them. We don't have to press space. Here's a kitchen. I guess my family don't care about me, not coming to look for me or anything like that. A bathroom. With a... With an attached room. Oh! Hello, fixed camera scare. Haven't seen one of you in a while. You. Did you come from the outside? I've been trapped here for weeks. Months. I don't even know anymore. Well, how long ago did we take out this rental? Uh, I need to get the keys. My parents, sir. Forget about your parents. You'll never see them again anyway. You are doing such a fantastic job of keeping the child calm in this situation. Unless... Unless what? You'll have to perform a ritual to exercise this cursed place. Yes, that's it. I can't do it myself, of course. I'm just some helpless rental man. Good explanation. Good. But you, you're a little girl. Who else could do it better? Okay, so I get now that you are very much a satire on this genre of game. I... You just need to find the artifacts. It's, uh, let me see. Six crosses. A woman behind bars. Some angry man. No, not me. Three candles, and then... Wait, I think you should know. There appears to be a secret room somewhere in here. I don't know how to summon it, but some of the stuff is probably there. Good luck! Huh. Well, I'm overwhelmed. Yeah, so this looks like it's kind of leaning into those horror tropes while very much being actually more of a comedy. But let's see where it goes anyway. Nothing here looks like a good place to hide. Uh, but I can't hide in the moment. I should make a note of the layout of this place so that I can get back here. I wonder if 90DF is on, but the TV looks kind of fuzzy. 
Wait, what is this? Huh. This one was easy. Oh no, do I really have to find all this stuff? I kind of assumed it was pulling my leg with that crazy laundry list. Also, what is my view doing right there? I can use this to reach high places. Uh, an excellent tool for any child to have. We use the wooden stool to reach the cupboard. But there's nothing here. Not the time for a hot bath. Uh, so that's going to be one of these, huh? One of those fixed camera adventure games where we just have to look around and click on everything. There's a man, but he doesn't look angry. There's a woman, but she's not behind bars. There's some ugly kid, too. <laughs> locked, so I can't hide in this cupboard. I don't think I can use this. Oh, cute necklace. This game is really confusing me. Like, I can't decide what the tone is supposed to be. No problem here. The table is floating. Fair enough. And it just played that noise? This game is confusing the absolute heck out of me. I have no idea what's going on. There's always stuff between the cushions. Ah, we found a candle. Ah, this texture looks so meaty. And also, why is there so much religious imagery all over the house? That's kind of weird. What's in here? Oh, two candles. Well, that's convenient. I've never had a game give me two of an objective in the same place before. I think we're almost done with this hallway, yeah. Uh, just some clothes my dad would wear. Now this guy looks angry enough. Alright, well, unfortunately... I think we're going to have to progress down this hall. Apparently my family hasn't gotten worried about me. So we'll just have to have a look around. The fixed cameras, meaning that we're always blind to what's around the corner. A woman behind bars. Weird taste in decoration. But we got it. And that's the end. Every once in a while, I'll see, like, a glow from over there. I wonder if maybe... something activates if I'm not looking at the TV, or... There's something in the drawer. Ah, oh, we found a key! Wasn't there something locked in one of the other rooms? Is it this one? Clothes, clothes... And a cross. Hmm, we haven't gotten this angle before. Why is it doing this now? Hang on, that was really weird. Oh, I see. It was still in the hallway view, that's why. Maybe there's something in the back corner here? The windows look kind of low budget. Oh, we haven't even looked in the kitchen yet. All right, use the wooden stool to reach the cupboard, and we find another cross. And play a strange sound. Huh, there's something beyond the wall here. But apparently there's no problem here, so I guess we'll just have to take your word for it. Is there anything to eat? Guess not. And we can't search these cupboards. Well, I think I got everything, right? Now, why are you doing this to me, fixed camera? Camera? Why were you doing that just now? Why are you doing all of these things? Oh, there, there's that hidden room that we hadn't seen before. Right. Ooh. Ooh, now after spending a bunch of time in the fixed cameras, this feels really weird, especially 
now in the Hall of Mirrors. Uh, and look, the reflections even have reflections, giving the impression that there's, like, other shapes all over. Oh, this is actually kind of disorienting. Another cross. Only two left. Something tells me we won't be finding the next two without any trouble. Oh, there's a weird perspective shift as you get closer to the walls. Uh, there's something. Not a cross. Oh, and it opens up more, becomes less of a linear path. Only one left. Okay, I guess that counts. Maybe we head back in the other direction? Just so that there's a reason to explore every which way? So that's the thing, is because I'm self-reflective, casting a reflection on every other surface, like every once in a while I'll see bright pixels and think, wait, is there something there in the distance? The last one. But now what? Uh, just keep advancing in this direction, I guess. Not that I have any idea what else I could be doing. Sometimes when I pass something, I get startled by my own repeat reflection. There we go. This is where we need to be. The door is open. Now what is this? Ooh, hoo. This isn't a parody of the genre. This is just a parody of fixed cameras in general. Ooh. What did I just do? What did I just do? What is that? Looks like I can perform the ritual here. I should place all the stuff I have in a circle. Okay. Wait, so I'm just walking around, like, sort of pixel hunting for the space where I'm allowed to drop stuff? Oh, I see. Well, the more we do it, the more the pattern starts to take shape. Well, let's find out what this ritual actually does, I suppose. What should I even say? That useless man just disappeared on me. Okay. Here goes nothing. Okay, I'm not even going to attempt to say that. But it did something. Uh... Hello? Earth to Umi? Um... Oh, it was all a dream. Seems like the rental man isn't here yet. Might as well unpack what we can. Uh... Oh, never mind. The door is open. Could you go check? I don't think we should go inside the house. The end. <laughs> okay, that was a little weird. I honestly don't know what to make of that. I mean, it had a spooky vibe, but it, like, parodied itself too often for me to really, like, get spooked out by it. It was doing some pretty interesting things with perspective. Oh, I see. It was made for a game jam. Oh. Had one final scare in it for me. We finally got to see what in that brief glimpse that I had, looks like maybe the shape of whatever was lurking at the end of that hallway. So yeah, that was Rental, and I guess it was trying to emulate the vibe of Silent Hill, while also being sort of a parody of it. 
a little bit weird in tone, but I have to say, I actually really like the idea of doing something like this with these, like, almost Animal Crossing-esque bunny characters. That was a pretty interesting take on it. And I think you could actually expand this concept into more of a full experience. I don't know if I actually like the idea of it being very, like, very much a parody, or if I would prefer it go more in the direction of, like, cute but still surprisingly dark and creepy. I don't know. But in any case, it was definitely interesting. And finally, we have Burger and Frights. I actually recognize this one because it was recommended a while back on the Discord. Uh, it looks like we have to run it in browser, which is kind of weird. But anyway, it's a late night and you are craving burgers. It's time to ride home. Burger and Frights is a short indie horror game in which the player rides a bike throughout a dark forest. Ooh. It was inspired by games such as Rides with Strangers and a certain horror movie by John Carpenter. Looking at the screenshots on the bottom right there, it looks sort of graphically similar to Cleaning Redville. But let's try it. Uh, let's go to full screen mode as the creator recommends. Oh, and here we are. It's late. I should head home. All right. Okay, you can you can get off my screen now. You're kind of obstructing my vision. Uh, go away, please. Oop, don't want to fall into the ditch on the side of the road. Uh, and here we are. Mm, nice music. We can see the silhouettes of mountains and trees. And a radio tower up on the hill. Uh, driving through the woods at night is kind of becoming a recurring theme in these videos, but it's a premise that I'm certainly drawn to. Although, our light on the front of our bike is much more pathetic than previous games. Howdy, old timer. The game felt like it sort of slowed down as we passed, almost like it wanted me to notice something. And that guy's headlights did not appear to be doing any kind of work for him. Hello? Should I get off? <laughs> I can ring my little bell. Bike bells are the war drums of the modern day, really, so it should intimidate any hostile cryptids or serial killers who happen to inhabit these woods. Hello, spirit! Are you the one left behind from whoever... left the bike? It's late. I should head home. Only this time in more scrambly vision. What's happening? Oh no! <laughs> Did the Nomai reset this cycle? Something's wrong here, and I'm not sure it's with the road. I think it might be with me. That bike did look a lot like the one I'm on right now. Maybe I'm the one who hasn't moved on? Maybe I was struck by that car, and I'm doomed to ride this road for all eternity. Constantly trying to find the way home, but never able to make it all the way. Also, I'm sorry if I called it right from the get-go. There you are again. Time does seem to slow down every time I pass you. Almost like, perhaps, it's a traumatic memory. And there's the bike. Only this time with a blood smear leading off. And a more complete vision of the spirit.
and it terminates just after the rail crossing. Or at least I assume it will, unless we're able to get a little farther this time. No. And I notice it's darker here each and every time. This time, all of the lights are out in this place. Full moon up in the sky. Oh, that purple sky with the stars against it. This whole thing has the aesthetic of, like, a Halloween card. And I am here for it. Yeah, this definitely feels like a ghostly, unfinished business loop. There's a conspicuous open field right there. I hadn't noticed you yet, Mr. Scarecrow. Maybe I should look around a little more. Maybe there's something I'm supposed to do to get out of this. Okay, so things aren't exactly the same every time. Now, the fact that you- Stop! Well, so much for that. I guess it's still the same loop, though. Let us go forward. I do wonder what would happen if we were to try and ride in the other direction. Maybe we'll try that in the next loop. An even bigger puddle of blood. Also, maybe there's something I'm supposed to do with my bell by ringing it at a certain time? Or maybe I'm reading way too much into this. Oh, look at those silhouetted figures on a train. Whenever I see a train pass by, I look at the people in the windows zipping past. You have time to process roughly, like, one person every tenth of a second. And it's weird to think that each one of them is on their way to do something. Either to or from. Now, this is taking a little while, but this time we didn't see the spirit on the road. Maybe we approach, or maybe we're meant to turn back. We can't actually seem to do that. In fact, right now, I can't move at all. She's getting closer. And it looks like... I can't tell if she's holding her own hands or if she's carrying something. You look a little different now! As do the passengers. Well, bless it says, and this loop! <sighs> At least you didn't take my burgers and fries. Let's keep going. Oh! No, we have to avoid her. Ow! Is she behind me still, or is she only gonna come from in front? Oh, this light really does not leave us a lot of room to react! That breathing in the sky. Stay close to the middle. That'll give us t more time to react, more room to react. This road's taking a sudden sharp curve. Okay, this has become a lot more difficult in a big hurry in that gameplay has been added to the mix. The sky seems to have taken on a different hue. Perhaps morning is approaching and we just need to last? Maybe I'm the one that actually hit her and I'm forced to relive things in her shoes. Now it's darker, yes, but this place looks abandoned. The sign is all dirty. The windows almost look like they're boarded up. What happens if I try going back the other way? If I try moving in the opposite direction? 
Nope, not allowed. All right, let's continue and face our fate, I suppose. And my bag is blood-stained now, rather than grease-stained. At this point, do you even still want it? So the important questions to ask here are who am I? Who's the old man in the car? And who is the girl? Also, there's no scarecrow this time around. Oh, I have so many questions, and I'm not sure if this game is going to be the type to answer them. Oh my god! Oh, is this a oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, that was really well done. Oh, it knew I was going to be rubbernecking. Huh. And yet I couldn't help but do it again. This is actually getting really scary. No bike, but the blood smear is still present in the pavement. Yeah, I see you there. Oh my god. Well, you were definitely the one on that other bike. I'm definitely getting hit by that train at some point. I feel like... <sighs> so, like, if I wasn't in a loop, there's no way I'd be doing this. Well, that was mercifully short. Lights on the side of the road? Things rising and f falling? What are those? There's more of them appearing up ahead. Those look like skulls. Illuminated white skulls. And the... Whoa. Wait, are you coming from behind on the right side or the... Yeah, you're following me now. Okay, so that's the time to maybe pick up the pace. Uh, pedal, pedal, pedal! Pedal fast enough to power a small city! Oh, now this is like a nightmare, actually. A recurring element of going down the road with something in pursuit. Something following you, but you just can't seem to pedal fast enough. Only fast enough so that it's always just behind you. And the road becomes harder and harder to navigate, harder and harder to avoid obstacles. And you just know you're going to lose your balance at some point. Uh, flip around, flip around. Eh. It's like a never-ending bridge. It's only now that I'm catching on to just how long this one bridge is. And then there's also the fact that my pursuer is apparently driving over all these huge gaps. Okay, thread the needle, thread the needle, thread the needle. There's going to be something right at the end. Come on, just give me the jump scare. Just give me the jump scare. No. Only another reset. It's me. Yeah, well, I had already gathered that some element of this is me. Maybe I'm the driver, maybe I'm the girl. Who knows, but I'm definitely reliving some past sin in some way. To Anella, I, what does that mean? You're slowing me down for the Scarecrow, which turns to face me as I pass. This time we see the cyclists as they make their journey, visible only in the street lamps ahead. Will we see where they ended up?
Every second I don't see something is another nerve-wracking second. Wait. We're turning and heading downhill now. This isn't the way it's been. Down into the tunnel. Oh no, this is becoming a very steep slope. Very dangerous for a bike. What are those sounds? <laughs> what are you trying to make me see, spirit? There's these dark gulfs, but they don't mean we're out of the tunnel. They make you think that momentarily, but... What are you... Uh, now would be a good time to start pedaling. Go, 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 go! Oh, this, uh, this is sort of like a similar chase from Lost in Vivo. I can feel it right on my back! Can you not pedal even a little bit faster than this? No! Ah! Uh, oh, it's a marathon! Out of my way, out of my way! No, it's too dark! I can only see you when you're right in front of me! Come on, keep going! Keep going, keep going, keep going! No! There's no time to react! You guys are keeping me from occupying the middle. Ah! Uh, forcing me off the road and straight into these things. I'm starting to think it's deliberate. Are you trying to make me... Are you trying to make me realize the anxiety that cyclists feel? How vulnerable they are on the road? Tanella. Oh! Avoid the walls! Avoid the walls! Uh. There is no margin for error here. And the twisting and turning nature of this narrow tunnel do not help! There's that driver again. There is a lot going on in this game. So many ideas on display. But I, I just have to wonder where this is all going. No, no, oh, you just arbitrarily limited my view distance. I saw you do that. Yep, I saw this coming. But it's not over yet. It looks like there's one lone figure sat inside. Sky now a dark red, and it tells me it's too late. A variation on what we were told at the very beginning. The road no longer much of a road. But honestly, that's somewhat relieving. There's the full bodies of the shapes we were seeing off to the sides of the bridge before. Some dark mass up in the sky, a planet, or a giant eye watching me go down this hill. Oh, this is creepy. I'm gonna have a lot to say about this at the end, but I don't feel like I can really gather my thoughts effectively right now. Yeah, I definitely feel I'm being watched. First time we have to pedal uphill. I've been snared on hooks. Well, that's not good. Enough.
Hi, you're new. You do not belong. Was that a rescue? Oh. Okay, I think our role has been clarified. Yep. Have a nice meal. Yeah, so that was Burger and Frights. And that was really, really good. It started out kind of basic, and I was worried there wouldn't be much to it, but it really... I guess that's a good thing, because it knew to build to what it was leading towards. Establish a sense of creepiness so that you wouldn't know exactly where it was going. It kept you guessing by introducing all these elements little by little. It actually reminds me a lot of a movie I watched years ago titled Dead End, although I'm not sure if that was John Carpenter. It says it was inspired by a John Carpenter movie, I'm not sure which one. I really like the idea that this was all a punishment by the victim, and it does this by placing us into their role and having what would have been our role as this disturbing horrible figure that stalks us. I wonder if it's not maybe meant to imply that this wasn't just an accident, you know, not being able to see her in the dark, which was a huge element of the game, was just how pathetic those headlights were. But also, maybe it's like meant to imply that we fell asleep at the wheel, and that's why it happened. It says at the end, enjoy your meal. So maybe that's the idea, is that like we were careless coming out here for such a petty reason, and someone died because of it. Like we really should have known that we weren't okay to drive, and somebody else paid the price. I mean, the more I think about it, the more I realize that every aspect of this is playing into the vulnerability of being a cyclist. Like that uncontrolled speeding downhill, cars coming from either direction, being constantly in danger from all these obstructions in the road that come at you so quickly. It really built a sense of dread and hopelessness seeing the restaurant become darker and more and more abandoned, giving the impression that all this time is passing? I was sort of starting to think that maybe I was the ghost, that maybe I never made it home, and I'm therefore never going to make it out of this loop. But in the end, it kept me guessing by having all these various elements, by changing things little by little on each loop, and ultimately by having the story told through that role reversal. But anyway, that was Burger and Frights, and this has been another three short horror games. And if you liked this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try any of these games out for yourself, those links will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.